Hello again, and welcome to Technology Connections 2, the channel where I talk about stuff and don't prepare for anything. So yesterday, I spent the good portion of the day at Six Flags Great America, which is my local theme park in Gurney, Illinois, and this roller coaster, which is Vertical Velocity, is one of the neatest from a technological perspective because it is a launched coaster using linear induction motors. Now, what I love about this almost more than anything is the sound it makes when the trains are launched forward. It makes this ridiculously awesome screeching noise and that, so it's gonna be coming up any second now. So you can see the linear induction motors here. They go throughout almost the entire straight portion of the track. And the trains go at speeds of 70 miles an hour through the stations. You can see these enormous blowers on top of the magnets. Uh, presumably they're getting extraordinarily hot because these blowers run all the time. And this is a really fun ride. The only challenge is its capacity is pretty small because there's only one train and you have to wait for the entire ride cycle before it gets loaded again. But I wanted to look a little bit more at what's running this ride because obviously these induction motors are huge and need a ridiculous amount of power. You can hear that awesome screeching noise again. So if you take a look at these cables up here, they have really, really beefy cables. And I'm just assuming that the electronics that drive this ride, the I'm assuming it's a bunch of insulated gate bipolar transistors, perhaps, that are driving the motors because the motors do appear to be uh, variable speed. They're not simply uh, synchronous motors. And the reason why is because it sounds very different and plus it can move the, the train at various speeds throughout the station. That's why you hear that screeching noise at the end of the ride. So then I'll uh, play for you again the amazing sound that it makes as it launches the train. Anyway, I am. Um, this is a fun ride, and but I, of course, being me, am most fascinated by the technology driving the ride. This being Six Flags, the ride's track is incredibly dirty because Six Flags doesn't clean anything unless it gets so dirty that it's impacting its function. Because that's Six Flags, you know. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to look at was if you go. Oh, you can't see what I'm clicking on. The other thing that I did was I was curious as to what sort of electrical requirements this ride might have. So I decided I never really paid attention to these, but look at all of these pad mount transformers that are behind the ride. Now, for some context, this one here is, I think, the same exact size of the transformer that's powering the building that I live in, which has 60 units and each one has 100 amp service. So there's two of these enormous transformers, which are probably at least double the size of this. So it would appear as though this ride needs as much power as about seven uh, condo buildings, essentially. Seven enormous, well, not enormous, my building's not huge, but seven condo buildings, each with 60 people in them. Now, granted, of course, the ride is only using that power when it, you know when it launches but I, it makes me curious are there what are the electronics driving it are there capacitors or is it really just going directly onto the grid because if you look at the um let me pull up the other picture here there is you know this area here this kind of concrete like bunker goes underneath the entire ride and presumably the electronics are inside here because these big conduit trays go into this section. So there could be large banks of capacitors. There might even be like a flywheel to generate enough power to, to run this ride. But I've just always been uh, always been fascinated by this particular ride. And I, I know it's not unique to Six Flags Great America. It's an Intamin launched, I think an Intamin impulse coaster. 
Uh, let me look that up. I know it's made by Intamin. Impulse Roller Coaster. Wouldn't you know it? That is exactly what it's called. Uh-huh. And there are seven of them. So not you know, not a ton of them, but anyway. So the other thing I wanted to show you, which is actually more just me asking a question, is this footage of the chain lift for Raging Bull. Uh, you might be able to see what I'm asking about here, and I do have a theory as to what it is, but I'm going to ask you fine people because someone probably knows, and since this channel seems to do theme park type stuff, uh, I bet somebody will know here. I'm going to show some footage right now as I pan my camera of the American Eagle, which is an enormous wooden roller coaster we have here in Gurney. It was built in 1981. I'm always amazed at the lattice structures of wooden roller coasters. They seem like incredibly complicated to build, and perhaps that's why they really don't get made in the traditional sense anymore. But if you look at the chain lift for Raging Bull, you can see that the motor is turning slowly right now because there's no train on it. But as it accelerates, watch what happens to that counterweight when the train engages with the lift. You see how as the train's weight gets pulled by the chain, it gets it's pulling back on the actual pulley? Does anybody know why that might be? Let me go back to this frame here. the gear seems to move backwards as the train latches onto it. I have a theory that the counterweight, Raging Bull is a B&M roller coaster, which I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it stands for Bolliger and Mabillard, and they are known for being exceptionally smooth coasters, and the one thing that I've never experienced on any of their coasters is a ka-chunk when the uh, train engages with the chain lift. Most roller coasters, as you go up the chain lift and it falls back against it, there's a big clunk as your train engages with it. But on B&M coasters, there's never that clunk. It's always a perfectly smooth transition from the track to the chain lift. And I'm wondering if the uh, if that counterweight thing might be the mechanism by which that is accomplished. Because it just seems to me like there's got to be some sort of something compensating for the alignment of the chain with the train because it's never that perfect. So my guess is that the chain is actually moving slightly faster. Let me see if you can uh, see these tires on this footage or if I didn't get that. Uh, you can barely see them. There's idler tires up here. So the train first engages with these idler tires which pushes them forward before it latches onto the chain. So my guess is that the chain is moving slightly faster than these idler tires are pulling the chain, uh, the train, and that means that the chain will kind of grab onto the train slowly, and then that counterweight sinks down as the weight gets shifted onto the chain, which eliminates that kerchunk. That's my theory, but I have no idea if that's correct. But. Well, before I close out this video, I just wanted to give some quick thoughts on Six Flags in general because, you know, I like theme parks and if you saw the other videos on this channel, I have a, a an affinity for Disney theme parks, not only because I work there, but because I think they do so many theme parky things extremely well. This is the first time I've been to Six Flags in about three years and oh my goodness, everything but admission is ridiculously expensive. Parking was $26, that's $6 more than Disney World, and I had a meal at Moose Burger Lodge, which was chicken tenders, fries, and a drink, and it was $23. Six Flags has just really, I think admission was only $45, but every single other thing you might want to do is terribly priced. And the thing about Six Flags that just kind of bothers me is that they don't seem very friendly. They have all these signs like smile, you're on camera, and at every like fence where you might be entering a dangerous area, they have these enormous signs that are like, do not enter, you will be prosecuted, and they have handcuffs on them, and it's just like very, very animus. There seems to be an animosity towards their guests that you would never find at a Disney theme park because Disney tries first and foremost to be nice. And as my final close out, Oops, 
that was a ding. As my final closeout, let me just say, no, it f***ing isn't.